Welcome. Gene therapy is transforming how we treat disease, but could it also turn back the clock and buy you more time? A new clinical trial claims it can reverse aging, but it will cost you $1 million to participate. Kansas-based company Libella Technology is sending participants to Columbia to undergo gene therapy that aims to lengthen telomeres. These are these structures at the end of our chromosomes that protect DNA during cell division, similar to caps on the end of our shoelaces. But telomeres shorten each time a cell divides, and some believe the shorter the telomeres, the faster we age. So does this sound too much like science fiction? And is it ethical to charge a million dollars for a chance to sip from that fountain of youth? So should we and can we cure aging? Molecular biologist Dr. Bill Andrews says we can and we should. He joins us in the audience and his opposition bioethicist Dr. Craig Klugman joins us via Skype. I want to thank both of you yes. so much for being here. Thank Fascinating you. topic. Bill, I want to start with you just in terms of how you have aligned yourself with gene therapy, this gene therapy clinical trial and why. Well, I've been interested in uh, finding the cure for aging ever since I was 10 years old when my father first put the seed in my head. For about the last 25 years, I've been focused on trying to understand the role that telomeres play in the aging process. And as a result, I've invented this technology now that it's being used in this study, and I also wrote the clinical protocols that are being used in the study. Your view on this is that you kind of consider aging to be a terminal disease, correct? I, I do consider aging to be a terminal disease. Uh, for instance, it's it, it, a typical healthy 89-year-old actually has an 11% chance of dying before they turn 90. That's, that's actually pretty terminal to me. Also, the people in this study, their risk of not being treated will be far greater than the risk of being treated, especially people that are old, like 89 years old, 90 years old. Well, Bill, what, what catches us all by a little bit by surprise is the price tag to be part of a trial. Well, Paying to be in the trial is one of the options, but that is actually, in fact, the cost of doing the trials. Uh, when you add up all the costs of preparing the gene therapy, we've done a lot of studies to figure out how much we actually need to actually stand a good chance of reversing aging. The cost of doing all the testing, all the doctors, all the hospital costs. Uh, we're doing 150 different biomarkers of aging during the study. This comes out to be a million dollars. That's, that's the cost to my company or the company that's doing actually the clinical study. Bill, have we done animal studies yet? What have you found in animals? A sufficient number of my studies have been done. We have provided the technology to labs all over the world, and it has been successfully shown to be able to reverse aging in mice in every way imaginable. So I want to bring you, Craig, into the conversation because you say not so fast. You have some major issues with this trial, if you will. Can you explain your, your stance on this as a bioethicist? My first concern is that aging is not a disease, right? It is a stage of life. It is a part of life. And so looking at it as a, as a disease, as something that needs to be cured, I think really does not give due justice to this part of life. I also have a great concern over this idea that people are going to be paying to be part of a clinical trial. This is not a standard way we do trials. Does a person who pays this kind of money truly have the freedom to go, you know what, I think I've changed my mind. I'm walking away. We also know that this is possibly potentially very harmful for the subjects taking part. We've had people die from earlier stages of genetic trials of this sort. There have been tumors that have been created and cancers that people have come from being part of these trials. So I'm concerned about all that. I'm also concerned about the social justice issue. A million dollars isn't something I have in my bank account, and I'm sure most of you don't either. Is this where we should be putting our emphasis as a society on giving very wealthy people the ability to live a longer life while other people go without food and clothing and housing and education, which are the things we know help most people live longer, better lives? Do you believe in the concept of or our ability to potentially reverse aging? Because you did just mention if it's just rich people, I, I heard an element in your voice that theoretically there could be a possibility of this. I'm curious your stance on that before we move forward. Well, I think anything's possible um, and should be looked at. The, the 
This therapy is based on the idea that telomeres are the reason that we age. And those are the caps on the end of our DNA. Oh, and as they shorten, for most people, as they get older, the thought is if we can make these longer, maybe people live longer, maybe they sort of de-age a little bit. But there was a study that just came out this month that looked at 380,000 people and found no correlation between their health, the rate at which they're aging, and their telomere length. Aging is very complex. It's not just genetic. There's also environmental factors involved. And this just feels like too quick a fix to be something that will actually have an effect on people's lifespans. I do believe in the idea of slowing aging, but the idea of reversing aging where you're saying you could take someone who's 75 and make them be like they're 25 again. I'm dubious, number one, but number two, I have just as many concerns with the price tag and here's why. It's not a clinical trial if you charge people a million dollars because you introduce all of these biases. So why would you do it this way if you truly believe that this works? First of all, uh, it, it is considered by the government now a normal way to do clinical studies. Uh, recently, the government has approved the idea of what's called a pay-to-play model uh, for extraordinary circumstances when a study is so expensive it can't be done any other way. There are studies that never got done because the uh, people doing the study were never able to come up with the funding for it. Other things that were discussed here is about, is aging a disease? Well, there, it turns out there's life forms on this planet that have no detectable aging. That includes lobsters and humpback whales and tortoises and clams. Some of these animals have been shown to be over 500 years old. Uh, if they don't age and we do, I kind of consider that a disease. Generally, a clinical trial is supposed to have a placebo, right? So how are you going to justify charging someone a million dollars and not being able to give them some form of a placebo or something to see that might not have any gene therapy aspect to it? I just, I just feel like a rigorous clinical trial is usually randomized, clinically controlled. You know, there, there is always a placebo aspect of it. And then the secondary aspect is this trial isn't even an efficacy trial where they could prevent reverse aging. You're just trying to make sure it's safe, right? That, that it doesn't cause cancer, that it doesn't cause an immune response. So, so it just doesn't seem like it's level with the other clinical trials. Well, this is a safety study. It is a phase one safety study and patients that will be in it are suffering from a terminal disease such as having been diagnosed with Alzheimer's over seven years ago. Uh, I, it's actually, their, their risk is actually higher from not being treated than being treated. So we are looking at safety, but there's nothing wrong within a safety study looking to see if there's any efficacy too. This has never been done in humans, okay? This is a first in human study. So uh, I, I can't say I know it's gonna work. This is, this is why we do studies, to find out if something's gonna work. Even if this works, Initially, the people who are all going to have access to this technology are people who are going to be able to afford it, correct? It's going to take time for you to, to democratize this, right, where it would be reasonable and accessible to all. So then you have this subset of people where they can afford this technology and therefore their families and their project. And we already know that access to housing and education and all these factors that he mentioned give people who are socioeconomically advantaged longer lifespans, better quality of life. Now you add in this other aspect, like is aging now stigmatized? You must be poor if you're getting old. You know, like if there's, there's going to be a lag, a time lag where there's a significant disparity in the haves and the have nots for this, especially in terms of resource utilization. Bill, I actually, I appreciate what you're trying to do and yeah. I respect your journey that you've been on and, and I just think there are a lot of issues around it. I wanna bring you in, Craig, in terms of uh, mm -hmm. this ethical dilemma. Let's say it does work for people who can afford it. Then what? <laughs> we have to rethink what it means to live a normal human lifespan, right? If we're suddenly living twice as long or an extra 50 years, we have to start thinking about overpopulation in a more real way. We've got to think about restricting the number of new births to weigh out death. I mean, there will still be death, right? There will be accidents. There will be causes of death, uh, infectious disease, things that we can't necessarily control. Would you want to have the same job for 120 years? Or do we have people going back to school and retraining for new things? Um, and do we hold up aging at age 16 or 25 or 45 yeah. or 65? Like, and, and I want to I want to ask you, Bill, because how do you this concept of reversing or stopping aging? Do we all just end up being 25, running around, and 
We're hanging out with our kids, you know, drinking people, beer. <laughs> people, people aren't aware of, like if people spend as much time in hospices and nursing homes and assisted living homes as I have. People would be more aware of the fact that the real problems exist now. Nobody in 200 years from now is gonna say, let's ban the cure for aging because it's causing all kinds of problems. The problems are now. There's a lot of very depressed, unhappy people in these homes who can't take care of themselves. And we just don't know about it because they're all locked up in these, these houses. They're not locked up. These are people choosing to have a meaningful, beautiful way to have finish the last stage of their life. These are, you know, it's not a question of, look, I appreciate that you are a visionary. I appreciate that you are trying to improve human lives. That's wonderful. My question is how you're going about doing it. They are locked up. I've been in enough of these places. No, they can't get out. Uh, but the... Uh, uh, safety, there was an FDA approved study where actually people had uh, immune responses and actually got sick and almost died. And there's been some clinical studies with gene therapy, FDA approved, where people did die. But I've looked at these studies, the people that were involved in, in these studies, the scientists and medical doctors actually did some pretty dumb things. I am in disbelief that some of these things, even though they're FDA approved, were done by uh, dumb errors and stuff. I've made certain that the study that what Bella Gene Therapeutics is doing is covering every possible angle to ensure the safety. That's the number one most important thing is safety. And nobody's going to get sick or die on my watch. And so to finish this off on a really light note, if you two had to pick an age at which to just arrest wow. aging, what yeah. would be the age you would, would stay at? I feel like right around 30. Because I felt like I had enough experiences. And physically, you still feel physically, I still felt no good, but I had some and experience and some wisdom. I think that was a pretty... Late 20s, 30s. Yeah. yeah. And what I think it's think? an interesting conversation for people to have in their own mind. But just I think. would say mid, probably mid-20s because it's before things started to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Any extension of life could be cool with all that that added experience and uh, knowledge. If nothing else, this shows the world how much we are learning about genetics and how everything plays such a huge role. We've learned so much more than when we were in medical school, yeah. for instance. I want to thank Bill and Craig so much for being here, thank offering you, your <clears throat> opinions. Really interesting.